I'm really excited to be here with a very special Jaguar. It's the XJR9, and this car is the Daytona 24 winner, and it's the 25th anniversary of the win of that uh, Jag. And we've got a very, very special guest as well. With me here today is Martin Brundle that drove one of these cars in period at Daytona. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. It's a great to see it again. Isn't it beautiful? A work of art. <laughs> It's an analog car, isn't it? It's switches and dials and a manual gear shift. I have to say, sitting in here, you feel actually, yeah, it's actually quite comfortable and you feel quite, quite at home. You're sort of snug inside and, and I'm quite happy to be, uh, to be sitting inside. It's, it almost looks more daunting from the outside. Now imagine doing 200 miles an hour at night through the traffic and bumps of Daytona. Flat out with that big V12 behind you and oh yeah, yeah of course. This car was my nemesis actually. I raced against it at Daytona in 1990 and we were nip and tuck towards the end and they, they beat us when we had an, a water pressure issue and it was a great fight. On top of Jaguar winning Daytona in uh, 24 and 1990, it was actually a one-two finish. At Daytona, one of the toughest races in the world, I think it's the toughest race I've ever done personally, we smashed the competition in these cars. You must have been pretty, I guess, is it happy or, or proud to be the one to get into this carbon fibre tub? I mean, all the other cars, this is very advanced for the time, wasn't it? Uh, I lost a teammate in sports car racing, um, driving a car that wasn't carbon fibre. So I insisted on driving something like the Jaguar that did have Mm -hmm. a good chassis on it, you knew it would, take, was it would take a whack. Under here there is a massive V12 engine. When you started these cars up, people jumped. If they weren't <laughs> looking, as soon as it fired up, it got such a bark on it. As a racing driver, the stopwatch dominates your life. You just want to go as fast as possible and win as many races as possible. So. And I suppose this car was the one for the job, right? Absolutely. The quicker you go, the track gets narrower and narrower. What speeds would you get up to? In the Mulzan, uh, in Le Mans, before the chicanes, you were knocking on the door 400 kilometers per hour, 240 miles an so, hour. So, 400 kilometers an hour, day and night? Yeah, wet or dry. Wet or dry? Yeah, a Daytona, I mean, a Daytona a little bit less, because you don't have the long straights, and you needed the downforce for the infield, and it's quite bumpy in places. So, this car took a real pounding in Daytona, uh, yet it handled it beautifully. It makes the car come alive, hearing your thoughts on what it was like, because you, you were there, and I, I just can't thank you enough it just adds so much to the car. So really thank you again for, for coming. It's been great having you here. Thanks, Lovely to see her again. Yeah.